Hello and welcome to Nirmal Bang, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Hirol Dadia. We have with us Mr. Heyman Tristagi, CEO at Vice Invest Private Limited, joining in, and you're watching The Financial Coach. Today, we are going to discuss about asset allocation and what real rate of returns means to achieve investment goals. Welcome to the show, Heyman, and always a pleasure to speak to you and get insights from you. Thank you, Hirol. Thank you to be here. Heyman, my first question coming to you is, Let's start with asset allocation. What is asset allocation actually? Because again, what happens is not everyone is really aware about what are the different kinds of assets which are available. Investments in today's world, a lot of people think it's mainly equity which gives you returns, but a lot of assets are avoided. So how would you actually describe asset allocation? Well, Hiral, I think it's a very, very important question. You know, one of the most important aspects for any investor to achieve investment success is how do you balance risk and reward? So simply put, how do you earn healthy return in a manner that it does not take you beyond your accepted risk level? So the focus clearly has to be on managing risk. And that's where I think asset allocation plays a very significant role. What is asset allocation? Asset allocation is something where you divide your investment into different asset classes. So typically for an investor, what would you have in the financial assets? You'll have debt. You will have equity. And if you're adding something, this commodity, maybe some part of it is in gold. So when you follow asset allocation, you spread your money between different asset classes. And considering the fact that different asset classes perform differently at different times, right? you will see that at least a part of your portfolio will perform uh, as compared to if you were putting all your money into one asset class. Now, for example, if you put all your money into debt, it becomes very conservative portfolio. If you put all your money into equity, it becomes a very aggressive portfolio, right? And obviously you can't have 100% invested. So the point is that asset allocation allows you to understand what is the risk that you're taking while investing your money and what can you expect from your investment because your money is spread across different asset classes. And let me tell you why it is important for anyone to look at asset allocation. Apart from the fact that it allows you to manage risk, you know, many studies have indicated that at least 85 to 90% of your return comes from asset allocation. And 10 to 15% will come from what are the options that you're choosing to invest in these asset classes. Unfortunately, most investors end up spending 85 to 90% of the time choosing investment option and ignoring asset allocation. So what typically happens is that when the markets are doing very well, the money goes into equity. When the markets are not doing well, it goes into debt. So you need to avoid a situation like this. When you follow asset allocation, you will remain invested in different asset classes, which means, as I mentioned earlier, irrespective of whatever happens in the market, some part of your portfolio will perform. Right, and that's an interesting fact that you mentioned. So what are the types of asset allocation that we could look at? Look, broadly speaking, for a common investor, there are three types of asset allocation that yeah. one can follow. Okay, one is the strategic asset allocation, the second is the technical, and third is the dynamic. Uh, strategic asset allocation basically it, it promotes buy and hold. So broadly, you look at you know what your investment goals are, what is the time horizon that you have, and what kind of risk profile you have, and you create you decide how much money should go into different asset classes. And you remain committed to that. As I mentioned, it propagates buy and hold. Mm -hmm. The second, as we said, technical, is where whenever you see a short-term opportunity in the market because of some economic event or any event in the stock market, is where you kind of you try to allocate certain money to certain asset class. For example, if there is some news or some tax incentive or some event, which says that, okay, for the next three months, equity markets are going to do very well. So what you do is, you try, try to change your asset allocation to equity, which is what is called tactical asset allocation, which means that you are actually focusing on timing the market. Uh, it can be very, very challenging even for the most experienced investor to time the market properly. So this can be a bit uh, a risky uh, strategy to, to follow. And the dynamic asset allocation is where you keep on changing your asset allocation over a period of time, not necessarily because looking at a short-term opportunity, but looking at wherever you feel that okay, for the next six months, one year equity will do well, you go into equity. Or if you feel the debt is going to do well, you go into debt. Here again, I think there is a certain element of market timing, which again, may not be uh, the right strategy for, for a common investor. So typically, uh, most investors should be following uh, strategic asset allocation. 
Right. So taking the asset allocations into consideration in terms of types, what are the key elements that one should be considering while selecting uh, the asset allocation in terms of investments? Well, as I mentioned, Hiddle, that I think the best thing is to follow strategic asset allocation. There are three or four important elements that one has to look at. One is what are, what are your goals? So what is that you want to achieve with your money? The second is what is your risk profile? What is your capacity to take risk? And that typically will emanate from the time horizon that you have. A time horizon is a factor where it tells you how much time do you have to achieve your goal? And which basically begins with when you start your investment and ends with when you achieve your investment goal. So I think these are three important elements that every investor should look at before deciding, you know, how much money should go into different asset classes. Right. And overall, you know, I know that the strategies will be very similar. However, right now, if you go to see, people do consider real estate, equity, debt. A new entrant in the asset portfolio is cryptocurrencies as well. Where do you have higher importance in terms of weightage, in terms of assets? Well, for me, I think uh, the core of the portfolio has to be in the financial assets. Look, real estate has, a, has an important role to play in the portfolio. But we need to understand that if you are planning to buy a house because it gives you security and that's where the family is going to live in, mm. by all means, yes, that should be the priority. But real estate as an investment option, especially if you're talking about buying uh, physical assets or real assets, it's, 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 it's not going to be really of great use to you because one, it does not have the liquidity. Okay. And second, we see the real estate cycle is not that every year you will see the appreciation. And the most important aspect is you're compromising on the liquidity. Now, if you need some money, you will have to either sell that asset. You can't be selling a part of it. So that's where I think the financial assets have to be uh, the core, basically, for, for as far as the asset allocation is concerned. And I think the right strategy also would be to follow a goal-based investment process. Now, when I talk about goal-based investment process, you define your goals. You define your goals, which you want to achieve in the short term, medium term, long term. You assign a time horizon to each one of these goals and set a target, okay? That if you want to achieve, let's say, your retirement planning, how much money you need five years, right? If it is for children education, how much money you need? And of course, you have to consider inflation there. Otherwise, there will be a wide gap in what you're going to accumulate and what you will need. So when you follow a goal-based investment process, you know that for longer term horizon, you have time on hand, you can take some risk. That's where the allocation goes to equity. If it is for, let's say, medium duration, where you need capital appreciation as well as protection of capital, you go into something hybrid, which is a mix of debt, equity, or arbitrage. And if it is a short term, the priority has to be safety of capital. That's where automatically the focus should be on debt. So the advantage of following a goal-based investment process is that you don't have to struggle with how much money has to go into different asset classes. Your time mm -hmm. tells you how much allocation should go into different asset classes. And if you have a longer term horizon, 15, 20, 25 years, despite the volatility in the market, you know that you have time on hand. So if you follow the discipline, stay committed to your time horizon, you know, you can achieve all your investment goal through this asset allocation that you decide based on your time horizon. Right. So, so Hemant, let's take two examples, one of a 20-year-old and one of, say, a 35, 40-year-old. When you're talking about a 20-year-old who wants to look at asset allocation as, and investments, what happens is the goals usually are not very clear because that's just a starting stage for them. So what would that generic asset allocation uh, or what would that good asset allocation be for a 20-year-old who's just starting to invest? That's number one. And when you're looking at a 35 to a 40-year-old, usually let's take into consideration that they're saving money for retirement. Uh, they're saving money with regards to where uh, children's education is concerned. And overall, third, maybe, you know, I mean, Luxury is something which they would want to experience post 50. So if you're taking a 20 year old into consideration and a 35 to 40 year old, how would the asset allocation actually differ and how would it, what would it look like in percentage terms? That's a very interesting question here. Let me begin with someone who's very young, who maybe who's a start of the career. Yeah. Uh, you know, there, as you rightly mentioned, it's very difficult to define your goals because, you know, you're talking about retirement, even though it makes sense to 
you know, start investing early for these kind of goals because you benefit from power of compounding. But it's easier said than done. It becomes very difficult to, you know, decide what exactly my goals are going to be. So for someone who is as young as that, you know, the priority should be in understanding the nuances of investing in different asset classes. Now, typically in a household, you know, every parent would tell, okay, go and put money in bank fixed deposit, buy, invest into small savings schemes, or buy gold. Very few households in India will talk about equity. That's where you see only three to four percent of India's population investing in equity. So at 20 year old, I think that's a right apt stage to learn about equity investing. Now, the advantage of that is you have time on hand, you have smaller sums of money to invest, you follow a disciplined approach, you understand what to do and what not to do when you're investing in equity, what to expect and what not to expect. So the advantage of that is what is that one factor which stops us from going into equity is the fear. Mm-hmm. And that fear comes because we don't experience that equity as a class. We go by hearsay and we have the fear of losing money. So when as a youngster, you put money, you learn your lessons. By the time you reach a stage where you have a serious money to invest, your fears are gone. You have learned, you know, what is the right way of investing in equity, how to, how to diversify your portfolio in that. So I think clearly the goal should be to get started, invest some money, understand the nuances of investing in different asset classes, especially equity, be ready when you reach a stage when you have serious money to invest. I think that should be the strategy for for a a youngster. Someone who's in 30s or early 40s, clearly by that time you have much more clarity on your goals. You follow a goal-based investment process, you define your goals, you define your time horizon. Based on that, you would know how much money I need to invest for these goals. That's where the budgeting will come into play because you need to see how much in my income. Income is fixed. Expenses are variable. Plus also you need money for investment. Then the risk management also has to be taken care of by you know, buying insurance and uh, other things. So clearly, if you see that there is a gap in what you can invest and what you need to invest, the right strategy is to start investing. Mm-hmm. As your income level go up, keep adding to that. But the point is like it, it, it basically encourages you to do budgeting, which means mm-hmm. that any point in time, you're in a much better control financially as compared to someone who's not doing budgeting. Right. So, Himan, that's a great advice that you've given us over here. Now, you know, I mean, this is all about asset allocation. Something that goes hand in hand with asset allocation is with regards to the rate of return that one should be getting to achieve their investment goals. And that's something which is always a miss. And what's important to know is what is going to be your real rate of return, taking into consideration the growth that the economy is going to see, the inflation that we are expecting, et cetera. So what is that real rate of return on investments? I think, again, a very, very important aspect for every investor, uh, apart from the fact that we said asset allocation is what decides what you can expect from your portfolio. Most of us as an investor focus on nominal return or the gross return that we get. I think one of the reasons why you see a significant majority of Indian investors investing in uh, you know, traditional options like bank and all, because they focus only on nominal return. So you get 5 6% return, and you feel that, okay, as long as my capital is not at risk, it's fine, but I'm getting some money. What we forget is that there are two important factors that you need to keep. Nominal return is what the return is offered to you. Nominal return is not something that you get to keep. So what goes out of this? On taxation. So we all know that if you're in a higher tax bracket of let's say 30% and the bank is giving you 5%, right? Your post-tax return is going to be around 3.5%. Mm. Considering the long-term inflation of 6%, you see the value of money will go down over the years. While the money will grow in numbers, the real value of the money will go down. So the real rate of return is your nominal return minus taxes that you pay mm. minus inflation. If this figure is negative or zero, which means that you will be actually losing a part of your money over a period of time because the inflation will eat into your uh, value of money. So this is very important for every investor to understand that your focus should be on real rate of return and not only on nominal return. Absolutely. And this is really important because what happens is a lot of people consider real estate as a good form of return. And when they talk, you you usually hear of things saying that, yeah, probably this was a house that my parents bought 30 years back, which costed them 10 lakhs. And now we're getting a return of close to almost one and a half, two crores on the same. Now, yes, in at the site of it, it looks like a good growth. 
However, when you subtract your taxes, when you subtract inflation, it's hardly a 7 to 8% kind of a return that you've seen in the last 30 years. So that's something which is really important to consider as well. And with this, how important will it be, you know, when you're looking at real rate of return, what are a few of the common mistakes people make according to you? Like I said, I think one, they do not even consider real rate of return as an important factor. For them, nominal return is something that says it all. So, so it's clearly when you're focusing only on nominal rate of return, as I mentioned, your real return will be either negative or zero, which means that over a period of time, the value of money will go down. I mean, take an example, as you mentioned today, if Bank FD is giving you five, five and a half percent, inflation itself being around five and a half, six percent, right? So think of the taxes you clearly are losing every year. So it's very, very important to consider real rate of return and to get there, it's important that you invest in the right asset class. For example, if your intent is to earn 12%, right? Your portfolio allocation reflect that. It, it cannot be that you invest your money in bank and expect 10 to 12% return. If you are very clear that this is the kind of return that I want to earn, it should reflect in the asset allocation that you have. So for we go back to asset allocation clearly, which means that especially for the long term, equity has an important role to play. If you stay away from equity, there is no way you can ever think of earning real rate of return. Yes, it's, we all know equity by nature is volatile. There is a risk of volatility. Fortunately, there are strategies to tackle that. And the strategy is have a long-term view. And second is invest in a disciplined manner. So if you choose your investment option well, follow a discipline, you can get the best out of equity. And if you allocate a significant portion, especially of the long-term assets to equity, you will end up earning Positively. Uh -huh. Right. And very lastly, yeah. overall, Heman, what is a good rate of return in absolute terms that one should be considering? Look, it's, it's very difficult to put a number to it. Mm. But my view is very simple. As I mentioned again, especially when I'm investing for the long term, if I have to earn positive real rate of return, yeah. I need to look at taxes and, and, and inflation. So typically, my return has to be higher than that. If I don't get to keep anything, at the end of the day, real rate of return is what I get to keep. Okay, so it's important for me to consider these two factors and that will tell me what kind of return I should be having, which I can call it a healthy return for my portfolio. Absolutely, and that's something really crucial. So that's all about asset allocation and real rate of returns that one should be looking at to achieve their investment goals. Thank you, Heyman, so much for joining us on the show. Always a pleasure to get insights from you. Thank you, stay safe and speak to you soon again. Thank you. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for in-depth interviews of India Inc. and press the bell icon so that you do not miss our updates.